driving a new Honda Civic Si. Got my son in the car. Space is pretty decent so far. Okay, buddy. Uh, okay. Let's do the mirrors real quick. Hang on, Chamo. They uh, wouldn't let me drive a Type R, so I'm driving this SI. Yeah, this thing is a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be, honestly. I wish I had my tripod or something so I could like record while I'm driving, but the turbo feels really great. Shifter's pretty nice, brakes are good. Um, the engine sounds a little eh, but it's a Honda, so. Um, yeah, uh, overall, pretty impressive car for only having like 200 horsepower out of a, I think a 1.5 liter. Nice job, Honda. Okay, so um, I record. I started recording this video like a few weeks ago when I went to test drive a, um, well, I went to look at a Honda Civic Type R um, and the, um, the dealership that I went to, they had, um, they had one Civic Type R on the sales floor, and uh, it's like red. The, I don't know the, the, what they call the red color, like, like rally red or something maybe. Um, and it looked pretty good. Like you know, I, I'm interested in those cars. I, I red wouldn't be my first choice, but it for a red car, it looked pretty good. Um, of course, the I looked at the sticker on this and. Um, they had this car marked up $17,000 over MSRP. They call it a market adjustment, which is basically just a, you know, another way of saying additional dealer markup, but like um, trying to make it, make it seem like that is like the normal price um, because, you know, that's what people are paying. And honestly, if you're those people, I, I, when I was doing some research, like I was, I found a Reddit, thread like some reddit threads and then also like a, a civic forum thread where there was a bunch of people this is like late 2022 there was a bunch of people that were openly admitting that they had paid between five and fifteen thousand dollars more for a car in order to get one like sort of early which look man i i like i would like a civic type r i think they're cool cars um especially the new ones but you fucking idiots who are paying all that extra money for these things. You're ruining it for everybody else. And also the dealerships that are paying or that are charging that much, you guys suck too. Like, uh, and all, and the fact that you can't even order them is just absurd. It's like, come on, man. Like fucking greedy ass dealers, dumb ass customers. And now you can't find one anywhere, you know, anywhere without a, a fucking absurd markup of at least $10,000. And it's like, what the fuck? You know, and then the, the, watch, like, you know, at some point, Honda will end up being like, oh, well, this thing's not selling, so I guess we'll just stop making it. And it's like, man, people fucking suck. But, um, so I, so I was there, we checked, like, we sat in it and checked it out. Um, obviously couldn't drive it. Um, and another dealership that I had talked to, they were like, oh, this is like, too valuable of a car to let people test drive. And I was like, it's a fucking Civic. Like, come on. Um, I've, I've got friends and I've driven cars that are more expensive, like test driven them. Like, come on, it's ridiculous. Um, so I ended up test driving the Civic Si. I, you know, the first bits of this video I recorded some of my thoughts when initially I did, I didn't really have time to record much beyond that. Um, but I was, uh, I was su pleasantly surprised in some ways. Like I, it was more fun than I expected. Um, even though I had read like a lot of good things about it. Um, but it was, um, like it, the, the power felt okay. Like it, like, I don't know if this makes sense, but it felt like it had, like, the, like it felt like it had a little bit more than 200 horsepower. Um, like maybe the engine's a little, little underrated, but it also felt like it needed more. Like, I think if that car had 275 horsepower, that would be about perfect, which makes me think that the Civic Type R, which has 315 horsepower, uh, is probably a really fun car to drive. 
Um, and I wouldn't know because I can't drive one because they're too valuable. Um, so I, and I, you know, I think a few weeks back before that I had driven a new WRX. I, th I, had, I had talked about that in one of my videos and I liked that car a lot. Uh, it was way better than I expected. Um, but I had, uh, three complaints about it. Um, one it's like, I don't, I'm not one of those people who thinks they're super ugly. It's definitely not the most attractive car in on the road, but I think it looks okay. However, if the, the thing that I don't like is that the, it, if you look at pictures online, I think there's a company called like Aeroflow Dynamic or something similar to that. And they paint fender flares for those cars to match the paint of the body. And I think it costs like, I don't know, a thousand dollars to have it done, which isn't bad. But the fact that like, it looks so much better with the fenders painted. But the fact that you have to pay, like if you bought that car and then you have to turn around and immediately pay like a thousand dollars more to like make the car look the way you want. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, potentially also be getting other things like rims and tint and all that. Like that's kind of annoying. Also, um, I think it's a little overpriced for like the, the, the top trim level that still has a manual. I think it's the limited, um, it, it's like, I want to, I want to say it's a little over 37,000. I would say that's probably $2,000 more than I would want to pay for that car. And also the infotainment system sucks. Like I, I can't stand this like move to like put everything in touch screens. It just seems like a safety hazard. It's really annoying. It's not intuitive. Um, I'm not a big fan. Uh, but you know, that all being said, it was a fun car to drive. I could see it being like, you know, a car you could enjoy driving on a daily basis. Um, I just think it should be a little bit cheaper and they should at least have the option to get a car with the fender flares painted from the factory to match the rest of the car. Um, yeah. So and to backtrack a little, so I've been, I'm like, I don't think I've talked about this, but I've essentially made a list of like, I think eight cars that I wanted to test drive, um, with this sort of criteria of manual transmission, uh, reasonably fun to drive, reasonably affordable, um, and um, has four, I think it has four doors, uh, room to fit like, you know, my son and my wife and, you know, probably our dog uh, and maybe, you know, so to be able to like have an, a car that's, you know, family friendly, but also still fun to drive. So, um, so I've been looking at a few of these options and the range was basically like the cheapest one has been the Civic SI and then the, the high on the high end, not including insane dealer markups for cars like the Type R. Um, it's uh, the Gol the Volkswagen Golf R. So um, I like I've tried to, you know, be in contact with dealership salespeople to try and basically what I wanted to do is kind of do the same thing that my wife and I did with the, when we bought our Forester, which was test drive a bunch of vehicles and then narrow it down and just basically, you know, pick the vehicle, which is, I feel like the way it should be, but apparently we're still in this like supply glut thing or supply glut. That's not the right word. Um, supply issue where there's just like, there's cars, but they're either spoken for or they're like overpriced or, um, you know, every time they come in, they're immediately you know, they've been ordered by somebody or they're, or they're immediately bought by somebody for over MSRP. Even the Civic SI, the lady was like, um, yeah, there's a little bit of a dealer markup on these two. I think it was like $3,500. And I'll like, to go back to the SI for a second, I, I think that that car, if you're the type of person who's okay with only 200 horsepower, and I'm sure lots of people are, you know, I, I get like, I get the appeal like that, you know, the, the Honda appeal. Like I think there's some cool Hondas. Um, if you're okay with only having 200 horsepower and you, and a manual, that's a great car, like, uh, for the MSRP price, like for the, for MSRP, uh, I think it's a pretty good deal. It's something around, it's under 30,000. It's like 29 something. And if I was in the market for that, for like, uh, you know, and I was okay with that car and like my budget was like to go, you know, not above like 30,000, I think that would be a good option. Like, you know, the seats are pretty comfortable. It's got a great shifter. Um, it's got good brakes. It's, you know, reasonably well-equipped. Um, like, 
I think the WRX had more options, um, but the WRX is a, little, is a little more expensive. But they were asking like 3,500. So like after everything, it got you close to like 34, 35,000. And I was like, that's like more than a base WRX and an approaching like premium WRX. I don't know how they compare, but to me, like having driven both of them, I'd rather have the WRX uh, in, you know, unless the Civic is like at MSRP. Like I, there's, I wouldn't pay $3,500 over MSRP for that car. Um, so yeah, so I have, there's a few cars that I still need to look at um, or still wanted to look at, but uh, it's like, you know, some brands are just like, uh, oh yeah, we don't have anything um, on the lot or there's nothing within like, a, like one guy told me there's nothing within like 150 miles. And I was like, how, like, what is going on? Um, and uh, like, so I, the other one that I think I, that I had to email the salesperson about the Toyota GR Corolla, which I sat in at the Washington auto show and I thought was really cool. Um, I haven't driven it, but I've heard good things about it. And it seems like it'd be a really fun car to drive given, you know, 300 horsepower, all wheel drive, manual transmission. Um, and uh, I was like, hey, how can I go about, you know, getting on a list for one of these things? And this dude told me that they were, um, the list was closed, so you couldn't order. And the wait time for people who were already on the list was 18 months. And I was like, what? It's a Corolla. I mean, I know it's a cool Corolla, but come on. Like, you if you know this car is going to sell, make more of it. I, I don't know what the deal is with Toyota and Honda. Like, I, the, like, the lack of supply and then also their dealers. I I didn't experience the markup thing as, like, with Toyota, this particular Toyota dealer. They, they were like, we're selling it for MSRP plus, like, a $1,500 paint protection package or something, which is probably just, like, you know, clear bra, like it's it's basically dealer markup um in it you know written underneath something else but fifteen hundred dollars is better than like you know thirty five hundred dollars for civic s over for civic s si and fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars over for a civic type r but the guy was like yeah if you want to get on the list he's like i can keep your information and if a spot opens up i can like let you know or you know if somebody cancels an order um that might open up a spot and i was like dude 18 months like I want, I'd like to drive a Toyota Corolla GR, but not that bad. Like, I'm not going to, uh, I feel like 18 month wait time is a time that you do for like, you know, something really special. Like, and maybe the Corolla is really special. I don't know, but it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So then I'm trying to think what else. Um, yeah, like there's just not a lot available if you want to even test drive cars. Um, so you know, I've been, I've been looking at, you know, I also had one of the ones I considered was the Integra, the new Integra, um, like a spec or whatever. After driving the Civic Si, I was like, I'm not even going to bother with the Integra because it's the same drivetrain. It's, it's 200 horsepower and the Integra is probably heavier because it's got more options, like more luxury stuff. I thought it was cool when I sat in at the auto show. Like I was like, this is like nicer than I expected. And I'm sure it's okay to drive, but it's got to have more than 200 horsepower. And again, I'm not one of those people who thinks that horsepower is everything, but it's something, it's important. And like, you got to enjoy the car that you drive. And like, for me coming from like, you know, the Fox body doesn't have that much more horsepower, but it's got, you know, 300, over 300 pound feet of torque. So it's like, you know, it, it's fun enough to drive. It's also pretty light. You know, this car, the, you know, dude's saying my 2014 GT, it's got 420 horsepower stock. It's got a little bit more because I had the, you know, really mild tune. But um, I just don't think I could go, you know, from this to, you know, 200 horsepower Civic and not be, like, sad sometimes. So I got to have more than 200 horsepower. Um, it doesn't need to be, you know, three or 400 horsepower necessarily, but it's got to be more than 200. So, um, yeah. Anyways, um So I, uh, I feel like I'm kind of going about this video in a roundabout way, but, um, we're just doing stream of consciousness recording here. Um, so, I so I was sitting at my, uh, desk and I was like, um, there was one car from my list. I reached out to this guy at a dealer and he was like, um, he was like, 
we don't have any that you could drive right now. He's like, but if you want to order one, he's like, you can place an order for one and it'll be here like in a few months. And I was like, okay, this sounds appealing. And I was thinking about it for a little while and I'm trying to, I don't think I'm going to share what the car is just yet, but I was like, I thought about it and I was like, I sort of made an executive decision. I was like, you know, my original plan is just not working out like test driving, um, even being able to test drive most of the cars on this list of like eight cars is proving to be extremely difficult. So I was like, um, I think I'm just going to buy this car. I'm going to order this car and, and just sort of see how it goes. So like, I'm actually doing something I've never done, which is one, I've never ordered a car, uh, brand new. I've never ordered a car brand new. I've bought two brand new cars, but I've never ordered a car. Um, and I, have also never bought a car that I had not test driven first. So I'm buying a car that I have not driven and a car that I have, uh, I've sat in it, um, which might help narrow it down a little bit. Um, I've sat in it and seen it up close and I have a friend who bought one and said nothing but good things about it. So those are sort of the things that I'm kind of hanging my like decision here on. Um, so I was like, I talked to my wife and I was like, look, here's my rationale. Um, I, I, I don't want to mess around with like trying to find a Honda dealer somewhere in this country that will, um, uh, that will sell me a type R maybe in the color that I want for like, you know, a, 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 a less absurd markup. Like it just isn't worth the effort to me. So I, to me, it was like, okay, I'm going to get something that has most of what I'm looking for. Uh, and that I can actually order. It's so, like none of the other cars on my list, uh, could be ordered. Like the WRX, there's, um, uh, there's supply. They're like on the lots and depending on who you believe that's because, um, they're ugly or because Subaru, normal Subaru customers are mad that they didn't, um, make an STI version. So they're punishing Subaru by not buying the WRX, um, and any other number of things. But so I can tell you this, it's not a Honda. It's not a Subaru. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's, um, I, it's going to be like, so basically I went to this dealership and I was like, after I, um, had exchanged emails with the guy, I walked into this dealership, I picked the options that I wanted for the car, uh, and I paid a deposit and I signed, you know, a non-binding agreement basically saying that. Um, this is the car that I'm ordering. This is the money that I'm putting down. I can back out at any time and the dealership can back out at any time. Um, and the car is supposed to be for MSRP. So, um, I will say that I can tell you that it's got a manual, it's got four doors and it has a turbo. Uh, but I probably wait until I actually get the car before I, um, ex before I say what it is. But I'm pretty excited, and uh, so my tentative plan is, unless I can convince my wife that we should keep both Mustangs and I can still buy this car, um, that I'm probably going to end up selling this car. Um, I don't think the dealer is going to give me like an amazing trade-in price for it, so I'll probably just sell it, you know, privately, um, and then I'll have something that's a little more practical but still fun, uh, hopefully. Um, sometime in the next four to six months. But I mean, meanwhile, I can, you know, spend my time driving this and trying to convince my wife that we don't actually need to sell it. So, um, I don't know. Anyways, that's my brain stream for the day. Thanks for watching my channel. If you're new to my channel, you like my videos, please hit subscribe and keep an eye out for more taco potato Mustang content. Stay healthy, stay safe. Peace out.